Hello, everybody. My name is Susan Wild, and I am running for Congress in the 15th, uh, which is currently held by Charlie Dent, as you heard Jane say. Um, Mr. Ed, Pastor Edwards is also here running from the 15th. And I'm pleased to say that for the first time in a very long time, the 15th Congressional District is actually going to have a competitive election, um, which, is, which is a very exciting thing no matter how it turns out. For, for groups like this, um, concerned voters, the idea of having a truly competitive election with multiple qualified candidates is a really special thing. And it's been a long time since we've had that, especially on the Democratic side. So I, I'm proud to be one of those candidates, and I'm proud that, the, that I'm not the only candidate in the race that I think is qualified um, to run. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've lived in the Lehigh Valley for 30 years, um, which by Lehigh Valley standards pretty much makes me a newcomer. <laughs> Uh, the reason I've only lived there for 30 years is because I grew up in a military family and we crisscrossed the country countless times over the years of my childhood and, um, and teen years. And then I ended up going to college at American University in Washington, D.C., which just happened to be where my family settled um, around the time that I was ready to go to college. Um, I put myself through college. And then um, when I, I decided that I wanted to go to law school, right? and we had never had any lawyers in our family before, so I also went to law school in Washington at George Washington University Law School and put myself through school there. Um, I graduated from law school in 1982, which was an interesting time for, for women attorneys. Um, unlike now, when the law school classes graduate easily 55 to 60 percent women. It, when I graduated, it was about 25 percent of the class, and that was considered to be an astronomical number, um, because just a few years before, it had been closer to 15 percent. So when I got out, there was a real movement afoot to, um, to hire women lawyers. And so I feel as though, frankly, I got lucky in terms of time. Because when I got out of school, I actually had a relatively easy time landing a job. Um, unlike women who had come before me, who many of whom, uh, older women lawyers, who told me about the struggles that they had had where they had been hired as legal secretaries because even though they had a law degree, they weren't deemed to be um, competent to be real lawyers. Um, so it was, I recognized that at that moment that, that I had this advantage that felt pretty special and I, but a lot of it came from talking to the women who had come before me um, and realizing what a different time it was. And then, so after law school, I spent a few years practicing in, in the Washington area and then we relocated to Allentown um, and I've lived here ever since. I wasn't sure that that's what I was going to do when I moved up here. Um, it, I wasn't sure that it was going to be a, a lifetime commitment, and it's turned out to be. Two of my children, oh, I only have two children, my two children um, were both born in Allentown at Lehigh Valley Hospital. One is now almost 25, one is almost 22. And um, my son is following in my footsteps at George Washington University. He's in his first year of law school and actually just finished his first final about an hour ago. So I got a phone call on the way, on the way here. So the other big advantage that in retrospect, I, 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 let me just say this. I feel like a very lucky person. When I look back on my life, I'll tell you the things, and I didn't when I was growing up. Of course, you know, moving every couple of years was terrible, and no sooner did you make a group of friends than you moved on to the next town and that kind of thing. But when I look back on it as an adult, aside from the advantage that I had of having parents who cared very, very much about education and really pushed me to pursue my education, um, I also had the advantage at that point in time the student loans were both inexpensive and very available. So that when I graduated from law school, my combined debt between, and I also worked throughout both, through college and law school, so that I, not everything was funded by loans, but when I graduated from both of those institutions, at the end of it, I remember being terribly worried 
because I had racked up student debt of $30,000, which at $100 a month, I paid off by the time I was 40. Compared to the, student, the people I know now going to school, the young lawyers I know now are graduating with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And, and so when I look back on it and I realize I'm very happy to be where I am. I had the advantage also when I came to Allentown that there were very few women lawyers um, and even fewer women who actually went to court, which is what I have developed as my expertise over the years. I do litigation. And so again, it was, I was a bit of a novelty. And for whatever reason, it was well received at that particular moment in time, so that I was able to find a very good job in Allentown. And I, there's this, I'm very, very conscious of the fact that somehow along the way, uh, my, the timing has been right for me. But I'm also very cognizant that not everybody has those advantages. And when I look back on my own life, which was a solidly middle class life, had it not been for things like readily available student loans at low interest rates, I wouldn't be where I am now. Um, I wouldn't have the advantage of a successful career that has enabled me to, to develop enough awareness and knowledge in my community and, and contacts in my community to do something like running for Congress. And I don't think this world should consist of people who just had the, um, the ability to get ahead because they had lucky breaks. In my case, they were lucky breaks. In other people's cases, it's because they have rich parents or, or a silver spoon in their mouth when they're born. That is not what we are supposed to be about. So I'd like to just quickly tell you why I really think I'm qualified to run for Congress, now that I've told you something about my background. <clears throat> Over my 35 years of practicing law, what I have done is I've had clients who have come to me with problems. My job is then to listen to their problem very carefully, to listen to all of the information they give me. And often, clients fail to give you some pertinent part of the, the information that you need to have. So I also have to sometimes ferret out that information. The next thing I have to do is research the problem, because not every problem that comes into a lawyer's office is something that a lawyer knows right off the top of his or her head what the answer is. So I have to go research it. And I don't just mean in books. I often have to call in experts to weigh in on whatever the issue may be, whether it be the, uh, the co the, a cost projection that needs to be presented in court, whether it be a medical issue that somebody's having. I have to draw in experts to help with that. And then at the end of the day, I have to present all of that. I have to present that for my client in a way that constitutes advocacy that tells either a court, a jury, a judge, um, or just the other side why my client has the best case. These are skills that I believe are highly transferable to Congress. You need people in Congress who listen very, very carefully, who research, who call in experts when they don't know the answers. Because not all of us are born knowing all of the answers to all of the problems. And then, if possible, arriving at some sort of meaningful compromise. But if you can't come to a compromise, you have to be prepared to fight to win. And that's what I've been doing for 35 years, and that's what I want to do for the people of the 15th when I'm elected to Congress. Thank you.